Hi, I'm Caleb, and in today's video, I will be showing you how I made this walnut and maple brick pattern cutting board. To start off, I cross cut my 8 quarter maple into more manageable lengths, but still long enough for the cutting board. Next, I jointed one edge by using a spiral straight bit on my router. By adjusting the fences just right, the router can do the exact same thing as a jointer. With one square edge, I planed both faces of all the boards so that I would have a clean face. I started by ripping the maple boards on the table saw to the width I need for my cutting board. But after the first one, I switched over to my band saw since my table saw could not handle cutting the 8 quarter maple. I then adjusted the fence for the one row that would be half the width of the others. Unfortunately, the camera stopped recording at this point. Next, I ran the boards through the planer to smooth out the marks left behind from the bandsaw. Then I cut the walnut pieces that would go between the maple and plane the two sides. Next, I cut out four strips to match the height of my maple pieces. I only ended up using two of them since I was able to resaw them and still end up with the thickness that I needed.
After planing the strips down to thickness, I glued up my pieces in two different sections. This is so that I can run each section through my planer separately and will only have to worry about one seam when I join the two sections together. Once I leveled out the surface using my planer, I glued up the two sections, being careful to try and get my joints exactly the same height. While that was drying, I began working on the walnut panels that I would glue on top of the cutting board in the next step. I resaw the pieces so that I wouldn't have nearly as much waste as I would have had if I just planed it all away. And again, I ran the boards through the planer to remove the marks from the bandsaw. Next, I glued the three walnut pieces on top of my other glued up panel. Use weights to hold down the boards in the middle. After it was dry, I squared up one edge using the hand plane, followed by the table saw and then finally the miter saw.
I then cut out the rows of the cutting board on my bandsaw. This is where things started to go really wrong. As you can see here, as they are lined up for the gluing, I did not get a straight cut at all. My board was very unlevel. So to fix this, I built a router sled to help get all the pieces flat and level. I made a video for that, and if you want to check it out, there'll be a link in for it in the top right. I used a combination of double-sided tape and wood, wooden shims to hold my pieces in place without rocking. After going over it a few times with my router, my board is now flat. I ran it through the drum sander a few times to remove the marks left behind from the router. Although you don't need to use a drum sander for this part, it does save a lot of time. After that, I sanded all the surfaces by hand with my palm sander from 80 grit all the way up to 320. I then squared up the edges on the miter saw. I gave all the edges a small round over. To cut the juice groove, I clamped a fence on as a guide for my router. Be very careful not to cut too deep in one pass. I did this at first and it grabbed the router causing a big gouge in my workpiece. So don't do it. And now for the most satisfying part of this video, mineral oil. After the mineral oil, I gave it a few coats of cutting board conditioner. And here is my finished result. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more videos like this one. Also, be sure to check out my other video if you haven't already where I make it an awesome 3D end grain cutting board.